All right, so welcome back to the Drivers Hub. And today, instead of making like our normal cinematic kind of reviews that we do, we wanted to do something more normal, like a living with kind of video. And we have the perfect car for that matter. We have the all new X1 facelift over here. And today, we want to see how it fares against our normal daily chores that we do. So we have quite a few tasks today. Uh, we have to go and film something. We have to drop off a few things. And at the end of the day, we're gonna drop this thing home again. So we have a lot of stuff over here to keep let's see how it so unfortunately it does not have a automatic opening boot but the boot is quite big for what it is you can fit quite a lot of stuff in here so as shreesh is putting a lot of things in here uh, the tail lights have also been updated for 2021 so you get these new uh, design inside with these oled uh, drls over here so that looks kind of cool uh, no automatic closing boot as well kind of a disappointment but let's go and drive it now you of course get puddle lamps which i don't think you can see right now and this is the interior So I'm driving the new X1 uh, to our first task where we have to actually drop off a few walkie talkies, nothing too major. And this is the steering wheel of the car. Um, it is the older generation steering wheel and I have to say it does not look that good. Like the newer uh, BMW steering wheels are much more nice looking. This is not that great looking. It looks kind of old, kind of outdated. Uh, but it has some functionality, you have your cruise control stuff over here, you have your other volume up, down, call buttons, mode buttons and everything over here. You also get paddle shifters, but I don't know who's going to use paddle shifters in a family SUV. Uh, fun fact, uh, the thing over here, the instrument clusters over here, they're actually very similar to the instrument clusters you find in a BMW M2. Yeah, so one of BMW's best sports cars has a uh, instrument cluster like this, which is kind of weird because, I mean, that's a full-on sports car and this is a family SUV. So I would not expect that in the M2, but in this thing, it's cool to say that you have a instrument cluster from the M2. Uh, but apart from that, the interior is pretty classic BMW, very well made. Uh, but again, like I've said, it is a little outdated so even this stuff over here in between i mean you won't find it on the newer bmws you'll have a big screen over here with a little bit more of a cleaner center console uh, you have the old style shifter as well uh, but you still get the iDrive scroller wheel over here which is very simple to use with your uh, hands while driving um, this iDrive system is actually updated so you get all of the uh, almost all of the latest features it's not the latest latest one but it's pretty simple to use you can do a lot of cool stuff uh, show them the sports display no? uh, technology in action uh, yeah so you have your sports displays over here again I don't know who's gonna use this in a yeah so I don't know who's gonna use this in a BMW X1 but it's there nonetheless it's there you also have driving modes down over here sport eco pro and comfort uh, I mean I am a sporty guy so I will drive it in sports mode but trust me it does not make any sort of change in the driving style of this car the real way to do some sort of uh, change in the driving style is by putting this thing over here into sports uh, so the shifts are a little bit more quicker uh, you get a little bit more of a responsive paddle so that's a little bit cool but I mean again it's really not anything drastic uh, in terms of driving style So now I'm in the back seats of the X1 and as you can see, I have pretty good leg room, like pretty decent, not going to be a problem over long journeys. But there is one complaint for the back seats, uh, it's the angle of the seat, so it's quite upright, so you're going to be sitting at a very weird angle. Uh, that's the only major complaint, apart from that the back seats are pretty, pretty good to sit in the back. You have a massive panoramic sunroof over here, so that reduces claustrophobia. Uh, don't mind this, this is just a little bit of bird shit over here. Uh, 
you have some reading uh, lights over here so if you want to start them you can start them by clicking that um massive uh, cubby holes over here so you can keep uh, keep big bottles and uh, what not in those uh, some net nets over here to keep papers documents whatever you keep over here um over here you have your ac controls well not really an ac control you just have this scroll wheel over here so you can uh, configure the amount of air coming from these vents uh, first of all these vents are kind of weird because they're very low uh, over here in the back so it doesn't really hit you at the right spot the uh, the ac air flow so that's a big problem because it gets kind of hot in the back you have two usb c uh, ports over here mostly this back seat experience is pretty decent uh, you have some nice wood trim over here with the ambient lighting strip over here uh, quality and the luxurious feel in the back is pretty good not too bad but i would still think that this can be improved a little and i'm sure when they come out with the newer x1 it will improve by a large margin because this car is quite old like i mean it's uh, going to get discontinued soon and this is just like a midlife uh, cycle facelift for it like i've said before so yeah but still for uh, compared to the other cars in the segment like the q3 gla evoque this is actually very spacious at the back for the money because those cars are basically like 2 plus 2s in the back you can barely sit comfortably in the back especially of the q3 and the gla uh, the q3 has probably as much leg room as a polo or something and the gla again something like a polo or like a smaller sedan so this is quite a lot of room for the money and it is quite a lot of luxurious feelings for that sort of money as well so in that way the x1 is a really good deal right now Since this is the facelift version, BMW has done a few changes to the design. You get new LED DRLs in the headlights, which are more up to date in the current BMW lineup. Larger kidney grills to make sure it keeps up with the new breed of BMW X cars like the X7 and X5. On the side, it has some SUV traits in the design, but due to its not so tall stance, it still looks a little bit like a crossover. You get the Hofmeister kink, which is a very classic BMW design characteristic. The tail lights have also been updated like I've said and the exhaust tips are also very real. In this orange paint, the X1 looks like a very premium car and looks like a car which is 20 to 30 lakhs more expensive than its actual punching range, which is a very good thing to have. Even though the X1 might be a few years old now, compared to its competitors, it is actually the best in the segment. It has the most space inside, best driving dynamics and probably the most amount of quote unquote usable features. Pair that with the build quality looks and power of a BMW, you have a combination that is second to none. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below what do you think about the BMW X1. Subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have three new YouTube series coming out in the next week. One is Road to Valley Run and we have two more which are in the works and we really want you to watch the Road to Valley Run YouTube series because it is going to be a epic YouTube series with uh, us working on some really awesome cars and going drag racing on the 13th and 14th of February. So do check that out and I'll see you in the next one.